Welcome back to 254. My name is Karanja Alex and it's time for Youth and Politics. And of course, many thanks to Kalami Val for that, of course, informative segment on health. Today on Youth and Politics, we'd like to have a look at devaluation, of course, the current uh, impasse on county revenue allocation. And of course, at the tail end, we'll be looking at Kitui politics. And today, before I even go deeper to my topic, I want to introduce my guest, who is Honorable John Kisangu. Asante, Asante. Thank you so much. Have you ever been here? No, I've been uh, to KBC Channel 1. Uh, this is my first time here. Thank you. All right. So, uh, what is devolution precisely? Uh, well, the 2010 promulgated constitution saw decentralization system of government, of course, in Kenya, making history after its failed trials during the Majimbo times, if probably you can recall of such. The constitution saw the birthing of the 47 counties that, of course, narrowed down and brought, of course, three things all the way down to the county government. That is number one, power, resources, and responsibilities from the national government all the way to the county government. And uh, we want us to get direct to our topic of discussion. Yes. Big devolution. Big yes. devolution has worked for us, or is still working for us. Uh, Alex, if I were to give you a percentage, I would give you a 70%. Yeah. So for you, it's a bit 70, 30, you're still working on it? We're still working on it. And you remember, this is the second, uh, this the is the second term. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We we started in 2013, mm -hmm. five years to 2017. And now we are on the second um, second term of devolution. Yes, yes. And uh, I'm sure it will continue mm -hmm. to improve as we go, uh, you know, to 2022, 2027. Yes, yes. It will be better. There has been several mm. calls uh, to referendum. Yes. And I don't know what you think about devolution and referendum as per it is right now, mm. because there have been several calls that we need to, first of all, look at the constitution at itself and even look at devolution. Do you think for it's right for us to have referendum and amend some constitutional acts? Uh, referendum is necessary, yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, because, um, you know, it's now 10 years. Yes. Of course, we have to change with times. Mm -hmm. So there are things that need amendment. Others just need uh, to be polished a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, to make uh, service delivery better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So at least we are going somewhere. We are going somewhere. Though not everything needs to be amended. Not everything. All right. Mm -hmm. One among the prime aspects of devolution is yeah. public participation. Yes. And over the past, we have seen several persons and groups coming out boldly saying that they have not been included. Let's have, let's have an example of uh, NAT about the CBC, system of education. Mm. They say that they were not involved. Mm. And of course, looking at even the citizens during the census exercise, some of them noted that they were not involved. Mm. Do you think the government is, is doing it the, its best? You know, uh, if I were to refer to the County Governments Act, yes. uh, if you read uh, section uh, 174 mm -hmm. of the County Governments Act, so all the way down to 176, mm -hmm. it now talks of the objects of devolution. Yes. Um, public participation is mm -hmm. very essential mm -hmm. to achieve, you know, uh, service delivery. delivery. And, um, you know, the, the public participation is there to ensure that what is happening on the ground or how you utilize mm -hmm. the resources, um, state resources, is um, in, in accordance to the will of the people. Yes. Yeah. So it is actually good to involve people. Mm -hmm. on decisions that affect them. Yes. Yeah. So ha have we really developed in terms of involving persons because groups have really been out clearly noting that they have not been involved by any chance. Is the government, do you think the government is working its way out on this? The government talks of I mean, um, public participation, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we, for example, in Kitui, we've um, had um, public participation in so many occasions mm -hmm. on different issues. But the question is, after the public participation, do you or do the governments go by what people want? Mm -hmm. That is now the underlining factor. Yes. Yeah. Is the gov are the governments, you know, taking into account mm -hmm. the, you know, the concerns mm -hmm. or the grievances or the issues pointed out by mm -hmm. the public when it comes to implementation of, mm -hmm. uh, you know, policies and. Um, and I was and almost asking about projects. implementation. Yeah. Are we failing in yeah. terms, because we have so much that has been discussed, mm. looking even at the Building Bridges Initiative, yeah. so much has been discussed so far. Mm. Do you think we are failing in terms of implementation? You know, the issue of Building Bridges Initiative, 
is um, at the moment mm -hmm. it's still uh, with, the, with, the, with the with the board with the board i'm very sure and um i believe mm -hmm. that it will still be brought down to the public All right you know for their mm -hmm. final and i had the right honorable raila odinga say this mm -hmm. i heard him say some time back while he was in um uh Lordua, mm -hmm. that this document will mm -hmm. still be brought down you know for the public to have the final word on it yes, so yes. that they can still consider um, their views yes so yes and you mentioned something about the objectives of devolution mm -hmm. and uh, we just touched on one yes. and of course the second point I want us to look at is accountability yes. uh, we're talking about the issue did we devolve uh, the did we bring in devolution and we devolved the government and devolved even corruption <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, Alex, devolution, uh -huh. uh, if you read this law, mm -hmm. there is nothing it mentions <laughs> corruption. Mm -hmm. it, it was actually meant to devolve services mm -hmm. closer to Powers the people. Powers and responsibilities. Yeah, and mm -hmm. closer to the people. Mm -hmm. But now, uh, some of the counties are mm -hmm. doing it wrongly. Mm -hmm. And they are achieving the corruption more than what is was actually meant to achieve mm -hmm. the what devolution was meant to achieve mm -hmm. so accountability is an issue that is really it is a mess in so many counties mm -hmm. and that's why you hear you know the other day you had uh, you know in Taita Taveta they wanted to resolve yeah sure uh, Kiambu County <laughs> where you come from <laughs> <laughs> they are in crisis mm -hmm. <laughs> but as in Kitui we have badly off mm -hmm. but we are not talking <laughs> we are yes. just you know hoping that we will improve mm -hmm. so you know devolution mm -hmm. is good mm -hmm. it was a you know it was never a mistake mm -hmm. but to achieve devolution we really need good people in offices so yeah. we are failing in terms of our leadership exactly exactly that's the only thing that is failing. The, the issue is you know when you know you fight for let, let's say you want to fight for a um, to be a governor in Kiambu. All right. I want to give you an example right. of where you come from. <laughs> All right. And then, uh, you know, I think what is affecting uh, and what, what is killing devolution is that it's just greed. Mm -hmm. You fight, mm -hmm. you spend your money fighting, and then you happen to win. Once right. you win, you just want people who can, you know, help you <laughs> recover whatever you spent, right. make some money for your family, you know and friends mm -hmm. you know if you go to be you mean you manage to be a kiambu governor with that kind of mentality mm -hmm. obviously the evolution in that case is dead when when you when mention about uh you know when we bring in the aspect of corruption mm -hmm. and it prompts me to bring in the the body that is uh mandated to deal with corruption that is ethics and anti-corruption body mm -hmm. the commission itself mm -hmm. it has really come categorically that we are going to fight corruption in as much ways as we can mm -hmm. Are we really fighting corruption to a level like we can? Because we have seen very many arrests since devolution came in. Many arrests, several, like a number of them have been made. But mm. we have not heard of any verdict being given. That's the point. <laughs> That's the point. You answered the question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you answered the question because, you know, arresting people uh, or maybe county officials mm -hmm. or whoever is involved in corruption is not a problem, really. Our issue is you arrest these people charge them let's mm -hmm. see them prosecuted mm -hmm. let's see assets which have been procured with looted money mm -hmm. recover that is what we want to see C can we really be able to recover all these monies why not why is it there why why should we have an asset and recovery body why are they there we have a board well, it should be unpolished if they cannot recover assets and their properties procured from uh, corruption mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, if by chance, let's talk about uh, some yeah. of the issues that have been made or some of the arrests that have been made in the previous times. We have seen like uh, now the CS4 Treasury, mm -hmm. Henry Rotich, who was arrested along his peers and among others. Mm -hmm. Do you think that the money that probably has been alleged to have been stolen mm -hmm. or rather through the contracts that have been made, do you think that we can come on board and say now you need to, re to give back all these monies? Is it possible for it to be given back? You know, it is possible. Mm -hmm. uh, if we let those institutions which are charged with that responsibility to do it, mm -hmm. because we cannot do it here on TV, we cannot do it on the streets, mm -hmm. but we have institutions, we have the DCI, mm -hmm. we have the DPP, we have the anti-corruption, we have the asset recovery board, mm -hmm. 
I mean, those are the institutions mandated differently, mandated mm. differently on um, mm. constitutional basis institutions, mm -hmm. which should be able to follow up and get these people arrested, charged, and you know this property recovered, mm -hmm. and you know these public funds, and it can never be uh, you know business as usual when it comes to you know looting of public funds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that this is really what needs to happen. These institutions mm -hmm. need to get busy mm -hmm. and recover this money. So as, as you said, we are failing in terms of implementation. Exactly. All right. Yeah. Uh, there's something I, I want to quote the devolution cabinet secretary, Gino Amalo, who said during the devolution, during the devolution uh, moment meeting, I'm very concerned about corruption. We wanted to devolve funds, not corruption. It is an area of great concern we shall be, we, which we shall be addressing. Should we be addressing co corruption in and out, and yet we're not resolving anything? Because it seems like we're just talking about it. You see, that is a very good statement from the CES mm -hmm. devolution, Eugene Wamalo. I wish mm -hmm. uh, those in those um, institutions I mentioned could listen to him. Mm -hmm. Because um, you know when devolution fails, mm -hmm. And you remember they were fighting for 300 and mm -hmm. I think 27 billion to mm -hmm. go to counties. This is a lot of money. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of money. But you know this fight, you know, you fight for money, mm -hmm. but when it comes to, you know, the actual implementation, yes. you know, there is so much corruption, mm -hmm. so much um, mistrust. Mm -hmm. You know, that is where we are failing mm -hmm. as, um, as a de devolved um, mm -hmm. uh, units. Yes. So uh, I wish those in uh, the, the, the institutions I mentioned could listen to that statement. Yes, right? yes. That was actually meant for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, th there are several bodies that have been sleeping on their job. Exactly. That's the point. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what, let's talk about the DPP and the DCI. Yes. When we talk about the arrest, like for instance, one time I attended the, the summoning of. Uh, the better governor, Granton Samboja, mm -hmm. of uh, some few cases, not corruption necessarily, but oftentimes they usually come out so courageous, so boldly after recording the statement, and afterwards we get to hear nothing. <laughs> and only we hear that they recorded the statement, and that's it. The bodies that have been mandated, we only hear about ethics and anti corruption, and of course, Noel Dean Haji mm -hmm. making the arrest. After that, nothing is said. Kenyans have been so much of interest because, as leaders, do you think leaders? in one way or the other, devolving all the way down corruption and then ending up swearing everything. Alex, last, I think last week, I was listening to the president. Mm -hmm. And then the president said, actually he said it in Swahili, mm -hmm. that if you are caught up, if you are caught up in corruption, you don't start making calls. Seems <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. And I think that was very clear. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, you loot public mm -hmm. pa funds mm. and you you know you sort out your mess you don't start calling oh help me whoever you want to call but i think uh, the dpp means well for this country i've listened mm -hmm. to him and he's very clear on those who are looting public funds mm -hmm. so i'm also very sure that the leadership of this country is equally committed to mm -hmm. making sure that corruption ends and uh, you know the issue of the new notes mm. <laughs> it's a big blow to the corrupt because i'm sure they are keeping so much money that's why you see there is no money <laughs> around there is mm -hmm. no circulation of um, you know mm -hmm. money the hundred i mean the, the 1000 notes mm -hmm. so in a very you know in, in the next uh, two or three months mm -hmm. we are going to go the route which us went some time back when uh, you know people lost property right. to banks, mm -hmm. uh, you know, mortgages and all that. Yes, yes. You know, pe people will uh, eventually, you know, get their cars recovered mm -hmm. until to a point where mm -hmm. even the banks will not have anywhere to pack them. All right, we'll be yeah, coming. Because it's, uh -huh. it's actually the, the, that time when we have to, co you know, use the money. Yes. That is available for us, not mm -hmm. money from, you know, Alishabab and all those <laughs> all funny, right. funny 
<laughs> we'll be we'll be looking at that in just a few. But right Thank now, of you. course, uh, our honourable Peter Kilons has just joined us, and he's the MCA at the ward, and of course, County Assembly Majority Leader. He'll be on set in just a few. But before we even introduce him on air, I'd like us to look at some of the things that have been happening, including Kimani Wamatangi, who argues in 2016, of course, went to court to to try and seek what exactly does the county, does, does the government want in terms of revenue allocation formula? Because the formula that has been given was number one, the population, the size of the population in each and every county, equal share, there is poverty index and county size. So Amatangi argues out that um, the formula was unfair to some counties such as Kiambu that is densely populated. And some, of course, others that are, of course, densely and, of course, less of size. And I do, we'll be looking at that and asking my panelists what they think about uh, the way or rather the formula that has been used even before. And still on devolution, because that's our main topic of the day. Do you think devolution has really worked for us? You can interact with us, of course, on our social media platforms. We'll be looking at that later on. On the other hand, let's have a county allocation statement. And uh, the devolution of coming sector, Eugene Wamalo, as we said before, noted that he's worried about some of the things that have been happening and probably before even before even introduce the guest some of the things that have been happening in the country have been through the impact of corruption how best can we resolve corruption we'll be looking at that in but just a few but before then let's first of all let, let me come back to you mm -hmm. before even uh, uh honorable gets ready for for the next segment the county allocation statement mm -hmm. is still standing still and seems like not to be working uh this issue of um division of revenue yes. i believe that is what you are talking about mm -hmm. these are still made between the senate mm -hmm. and the national assembly mm -hmm. on uh, how much they want to release to the county mm -hmm. governments mm -hmm. um you know what will you say ma um wanyama sijui ni tem wapiga nao mhm fari fari wawili wakipigana nyasi ndio umia as we talk today mm -hmm. the county governments are stuck mm -hmm. uh, for example my county my my kitui county has not been able to pay salaries right. for the employees for mm -hmm. the last uh, two months now right we have now ended the third month without you know as we uh, proceed let me invite for uh, as, as we still continue on that i'd like to invite mm -hmm. to come on board because i i'm told that he's ready and peter kilonzo you can come on board he's the mca of art the world and of course the county assembly majority mm -hmm. <laughs> we've been discussing about of course devolution mm -hmm. and of course later on you probably can just close this side mm -hmm. Many thanks. Thanks you very much for making it. We much appreciate you. you being here. I would like to ask you a direct question because we've talked about devaluation. And now he has mentioned about the county statement. And in Kitui, he has just mentioned that there are two months the people have not been paid. Yeah. What has been happening? Uh, yes, the mic is very much okay. It's so, on yes. it. What do I say about this statement? It's mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. We, you know, first of all, let's understand that um, Commission for Revenue Allocation mm -hmm. just does recommendation right. to uh, actually Treasury and National Assembly. Mm -hmm. uh, your recommendation can be taken or then it can be declined. Mm -hmm. Therefore, this time, I, I do not know how the recommendation, because one thing, mm -hmm. I think the statement is deeper than uh, most people can look at it as far as um, uh, the devolved units are concerned. Mm -hmm. Because how did he, the government read the budget? How did they do the appropriation bill, finish with it, without uh, the revenue allocation bill, being concluded mm -hmm. that's a mess by itself mm -hmm. when you look at the articles of the constitution which talks about allocation of money mm -hmm. um, uh, the article 223 and thereabout mm -hmm. so there is a, a big mess than you can see then um, when it comes to issues of 
335. If your recommendations have been done, you have done your recommendations to your boss and he doesn't pick them because of one reason or the other, then the mediation team is supposed to come and not even to come and agree, mm -hmm. not to show the uh, who is mightier than the other. Right. And, you know, you just mentioned about one question that I wanted to ask about veto powers. Because is the battle that we've been seeing between the National Assembly and uh, the Senate, do you think it's an issue of who has more power about supremacy? Supremacy uh, wars have been there. Mm -hmm. But, of course, this is a very sensitive issue mm -hmm. to, you know, to bring about the supremacy battles. Mm -hmm. um, it is affecting so many people countrywide. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can imagine at this moment whereby health is devolved. Yes. Just imagine the kind of mess in the across the 47 counties, mm -hmm. especially, and uh, you need to think of the counties that cannot actually raise enough local revenue mm -hmm. to even run the Ministry of Health, which is very key. Mm -hmm. So it is a mess, and uh, I would. Uh, and I urge the, um, you know, the Senate and uh, the National Assembly to bring this to an end because it's really a mess to the country. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, when we talk about health development, do you think that we should not, we should have devoted some few aspects of, of responsibilities and such kind of thing, and others should have been left to the government? Let me let me be very honest with you. If I were to be the one making this decision. Mm -hmm. Security, mm -hmm. education, and health sector should have never, the health sector should have never been devolved. Yeah. So, so let's talk about uh, mm -hmm. the health sector and of course the education sector because they're the prime and even security as you said, mm -hmm. they're the prime thing that affect people. And looking at it in a broader manner, you, we have had several counties, even other county, county staff striking. And of course now going down all the way now to the local monarchy who is suffering. I don't know what we think about health as, as by itself, because we're talking about counties right now, they don't have funds for drugs. What do you think we should have done in order to resolve all these issues? Um, <coughs> the mandate of devolving some of these units, I think it is really very sensitive. Mm -hmm. Yes, health can have been devolved. Mm -hmm. I, I think the, 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 the big problem here, uh, Alex, is that though this um, uh, docket has been devolved to counties, mm -hmm. several functions, several of its functions mm -hmm. have not been devolved. And the monies thereof has also not been taken mm -hmm. to the devolved unit. For example, we've had uh, issues of this, uh, the, 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 the CT scans, which were bought all of them. And who negotiated the loan? Mm -hmm. Who bought them? Where is the national government? And uh, forced it down the throat, the, 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 the devolved units, that is the counties, mm -hmm. to take those loans. And uh, by force, mm -hmm. it is always detected from their budget, mm -hmm. whether they like it or not. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the issues. Why would you just default uh, a few functions and uh, you remain with the biggest share of procurement? The biggest share of procurement, procuring still remains with the national government. Right. And that is a mess. Mm -hmm. So if, if we decide we are going to devolve, let's mm -hmm. devolve, uh, we devolve mm -hmm. the workforce, mm -hmm. we devolve also the, uh, the, all the functions, including money. Mm -hmm. But if we are going to devolve the, the workers, and you remain, we remain the procurement aspect from the national government. It is ridiculous. You, your hands are tied on, on one hand, mm -hmm. and the other end you are being told you are free. We are not. So mm -hmm. there is a statement there, Just. Which, which you find, and when you ask them, nobody wants to answer that question. Why? I tend to think also <laughs> some of uh, those procuring uh, units uh, in this market are Jewish. <laughs> Probably just to come do you think the, between the national government and the county governments, mm -hmm. who is failing on their side? Because what he said is that the government should have devolved everything, not just a few things. You know that is why I'm concerned. Uh, they should have ch they should have just remained with the <laughs> with the with the ministry and you know run it like they are doing with the security. Because, like he said, 
they devolved, you know, the health sector to the counties, but still remained with some functions of mm -hmm. the same, some money of the same ministry. Mm -hmm. So we are charged as a county government, we are supposed to pay the employees. They are also buying some, you know, equipments mm -hmm. and forcing the, the counties to pay. Mm -hmm. These are loans. The loans he was talking about, the CT scans. Mm -hmm. And you know, not all the counties have gotten these CT scans. Not all of them. Mm -hmm. Some have gotten, others are still waiting. Mm -hmm. Those who have gotten are being forced to pay. I think 200 million or something. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's either they choose to devolve the whole unit mm -hmm. or just take it back so that you know operations become you know more organized all right when yeah. we talk about the main objectives as we had earlier on mentioned with you the main objective of devolution was of course to bring accountability and such kind of stuff when we talk about the accountability of the persons that are in these bodies do you think that someone is sleeping on their jobs what do you think um let, let me say something. I, I think I will reframe the question. Devolution mm -hmm. is one of the one of the best um, item we got mm -hmm. we got mm -hmm. from the new constitution uh, in one way or the other. It will be just becomes a disguise when we would devolve, devolve what you're calling corruption. Right. It really now annoys everyone mm -hmm. because the reason why we went to the subunits with the reason why we said let resource because you cannot have and let me tell you we cannot just have power on the grassroots without resources so if you devolve if you must decide of transferring power transfer power plus resources so therefore the, 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 the main objective was that if this goes, for example, to a unit like Kitui, mm -hmm. people of Kitui will have to govern themselves better right. because they know they have their norms, they have their tradition. Mm -hmm. But then if it becomes a curse at a point where you find uh, what we used to do at the national government is devolved down there, that one. I, I therefore want to think uh, counties, counties are the, right now, most counties have become the next centers of corruption. Mm -hmm. The next centers of corruption. <coughs> every villager, every person who comes on board, I'm a CC member, I'm a CEO, I am employed here, wants to get the loot which we really cry for mm -hmm. to be devolved. For, for, for us to get Better services we are not getting. I cannot, I cannot run away, away from saying that devolution has failed. It has not, but it needs to be corrected here and there. Mm -hmm. uh, at times, I find we can be cast if devolution can fail in this country. And when, when you mentioned about it's something that we discussed, we mentioned about corruption and being devolved all the way down. Do you think corruption? being of of course it uh, it began even before devolution came and when no devolution came it narrowed down all the way now even to the local government that is in the county government what best way can we resolve the corruption in the county government uh, well i uh, there are units i think i think there is a multi 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 agency unit which has been set up by this government right now mm -hmm. to fight that i, I think, think there's anti corruption yeah, there, there is uh, there is its composition of the anti-corruption, mm -hmm. uh, the DPPS office, the mm -hmm. DCI office, uh, and the asset recovery, maybe, mm -hmm. the asset yes. recovery. Mm -hmm. And with that, I think we are, we are set to go. So with because that if I collude with one, mm -hmm. the three can report you. Mm -hmm. If you co I, co I collude with the two, mm -hmm. they still the two can mention you. All you right. see, yeah, it was a case where mm -hmm. I was reporting to so and so, and the mm -hmm. cause, there mm -hmm. are some cause which are coming like a new, uh, boss, hey boss, that kind of stuff. <laughs> right. But nowadays, you talk that before I decided to, and this is a different, and we are given the case at uh, incognito. It's uh, maybe uh, <laughs> uh, agency to you, it's agent to him, it's mm -hmm. agent to him, it's agent to him, looking at how we are going. The motor agency, the motor agency mm -hmm. um, unit mm -hmm. can really fight corruption. All right, I want, us, I want us to look at the county revenue formula.
that I was, how that has, has been be, been being used. Number one, it's about population. How many people do you have in your county? There's been the equal share. There's also the poverty index, the the rate of poverty that you have in your county and the county size. Uh, and of course, Kimani Wamatangi in 2016 went to the courts, saying that this 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 formula is unfair. What do you think? You know, uh, let me uh, talk about Kitui because that's where mm -hmm. I I come from. Uh, Karancha, Kitui is the size of uh, Rwanda. All right. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a uh, thirty thousand plus square kilometer, and. Um, None of those areas in Kitui, if there is nowhere where you know you find there is no population, the population is there. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, this revenue sharing formula to me should have considered issues like uh, you know, the size of you know, the counties, like for example, the county of, of Kitui. Mm -hmm. County of Kitui is too big, yeah, with people in Siekuru the people in other world where he comes from, the people from Vochamatu, which borders, um, and Muda, which borders Tana River, and the, the National Park. Uh, it's really a big area. Mm -hmm. And um, quite, the population, I agree, it's not too big. But it is actually too big compared to the amount we are receiving from them from the national government. Again, mm -hmm. um, you find that, uh, especially on the, the issue of the roads, mm -hmm. we are given too much, I mean, uh, very little money. If you check the amount we are receiving through the Ministry of, um, of uh, the Lands and Roads and um, you know, Urban Housing, it's very little. It cannot actually do even three words. It cannot conclude the the EDEC, which is there in the in, the, in just Earth and Kanyangi plus my word, which are just in this ar ar around the same route. It cannot do. So to us, um, we believe um, population. Yes, it's good we consider population while allocating this money. But you know, they also needed to check about um, you know the, pop the, the 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 land mass. All right. Yeah. And what? Uh, let me. What do you think? Do you think poverty index is helping by any chance on county allocation? Uh, yeah. Uh, yes. But you also find um, I don't know the percentage given to poverty index. I don't know whether it is eighteen or twenty percent. Mm -hmm. um, first, let me say this, Alex. I do not know the reason why Senator Wamatangi went to court mm -hmm. on the issue of because his he was faulting the formula that has been used. What did he suggest? Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes, let me tell you, mm -hmm. uh, um, revenue mm -hmm. allocation or resource allocation is technical. Mm -hmm. One is technical. And the second is also political. Mm -hmm. So he was doing his part of political. Because the proposal that he had was that they should be looking at the ge geographical terrain, population density, dependency ratio, county contribution to GDP, which is a main aspect when you talk about the GDP and the county. I, le let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to... It's my senior. All right. <laughs> but uh, mm -hmm. really, the main focus here was GDP. Mm -hmm. I, I know I know the, the, the central counties have been talking about we, mm -hmm. we, we contribute almost 20% to mm -hmm. the national GDP or that kind of, that kind of thing. But uh, uh, look here. I, I think what they got is a fair, fair, it's a fair deal. 45% mm -hmm. is what is on population. 45%. Nairobi has the largest population. Yes. Um, Kakamega, then Kiambu. Mm -hmm. Then we go down, you find uh, Kitui probably number seven, number eight there, mm -hmm. big, or somewhere down. Let me tell you, even as you talk about terrain, let's, talk, let's just take an example of Kembo. I've been to Kembo. Mm -hmm. I know the terrain there, there is not really any much, but uh, the terrain is also complicated. Mm -hmm. But can I also assure you something? Do you see maths a bit? Mm -hmm. For you to deliver service, for a governor to deliver service there, like for a governor to deliver service there, mm -hmm. it really requires much on the land uh, on the land area. Right. So, l let's also look both the both sides of the coin. I think Senator did his job mm -hmm. to politic on this one, and uh, but let's also consider the technical part of this one. For what as you have said, uh, do you know that Kiambu is also considered as an asshole county? <laughs> <laughs> do you know that? <laughs> 
All right. So, so Alex, Alex, the issue of poverty depends right. on who is dividing it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And and you know it still remains. It can raise a lot of concern when you talk about <laughs> that. <laughs> it can raise a lot of concern. And what Alex did not tell you <laughs> that is where he comes from. <laughs> That is why I had to be silent when he says that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay, we, we can be looking at that later on, probably on, on another, another day. But before then, let's talk about the county distribution to GDP. Well, when we're talking about, for instance, as he mentioned, like Kiambu, let's say it gives like this particular amount to the national government. Do you think this should be the measure that we, we should use other, other than the previous one that was there? Or rather the current that we have? Uh, you know, uh, some counties are lucky to have had presidents as you know, they are representative. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, in, in Rift Valley, mm. uh, they are doing a lot of farming. Yeah? They are doing a lot of dairy farming. They are, you know, there is tea. And they are fully supported by the government. Mm -hmm. They were supported even before. Yeah? Central, mm -hmm. you know, that is where the, all the milk is coming from. Plenty of, um, you know, you know, uh, greens, agriculture, a lot of a lot of agriculture is happening there. If you come to our county mm -hmm. where you want to check our <laughs> our contribution to the <laughs> GDP, mm -hmm. we are doing, you know, honey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if you look at the input right. of the, you know, national government mm -hmm. through various ministries on what we are producing or, or, or what we can produce, mm -hmm. it's nothing. So that is where we were left. So we cannot give. So what we, we can. Don't have. You, we cannot use this as a basis of, um, you know, mm -hmm. revenue. If we go that route, then some counties will not get even one billion. All right. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. Alex. Yes. Um, GDP contribution to the national government, or whatever you you want to put it. Mm -hmm. For now, it can be juicy to some county. What right. about it tomorrow? If Kitui we decide to exploit the coal. Mm -hmm. And we be, by the way, we are not poor. If we exploit the coal, mm -hmm. if we exploit the coal, mm -hmm. we will be one of the richest counties. What happens to Turkana, for example? Now they have started exporting oil because mm -hmm. now you want to bring the GDP because you 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 want the backbone yeah, in agriculture, in what and what have you. I think the main the main objective mm -hmm. of devolution was equitability, to make sure that yes. we are equitable. How can we bring our brothers who mm -hmm. have never seen tarmac? How can we bring them up? Mm -hmm. How can, because, let me tell you, mm -hmm. uh, that child mm -hmm. who is in Maltabit can as well contribute the same mm -hmm. in percentage and in share mm -hmm. to that child who is born in Nikambu. It's only that if they are given an equal environment, mm -hmm. and I'm telling you, environment is very important for growth of a child they will also be equal Kenyans in contribution of GDP. Mm -hmm. For now, we have tried the, the, the session of paper number, is it number 10 or number 11, mm -hmm. which was saying that much money should go to where they produce much. We cannot go there. This is the time now to mm -hmm. raise the areas, to raise those areas. We have the potential to produce meat, get we count, meat in this country, mm -hmm. all the potential. But do you also see the infringed benefit you get from us? All the security you are getting in Kiambu, they are being trained in Kitui. But you <laughs> don't see that one as a contribution. Mm -hmm. What you want is what you contribute to the GDP. Mm -hmm. Kiambu, you have nowhere where you can put a, a range. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. That, that, that's a good point, you know, to probably wind up from that and then probably you can go. But before we go to Kitui politics. Uh, <laughs> You know, I want us to have a look at some of the things that have been happening. Like Nairobi in the 2017-2018 allocation was given 15.4 billion, to Rukana 11.3 rather, then Kilifi 9. Point, it, it's quite it's narrowed down all the way. And when we're looking at these particular billions, can we be able to account? Because looking at the statement that we have right now between the National Assembly and the Senate, the MPs are calling on the governors to first of all be accountable before the increase. Do you think we're feeling in terms of accountability, in terms of the fundings that we get? Probably can go with him. Uh, it's also a concern, mm -hmm. not just to, for the MPs, mm -hmm. but also to us. You know, we are doing the same work, you know, the Senate is doing in yes. the Assembly. Mm -hmm. Our role is oversight mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, checking how this money is being spent mm -hmm. or whether it is of any benefit mm -hmm. to the 
local mwananchi yes um in, in instead of um you know saying we we you know we reduce this amount you know i'm talking now about the mm -hmm. the, 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 the stalemate now i would wish they agree mm -hmm. you know there is no point reducing the amounts going to the county governments because the county governments are the ones right. handling all the you know yes thank you mm -hmm. uh, they are the ones handling um, most of the functions of um, which have been devolved mm -hmm. so uh, i would really encourage that instead of limiting the resources mm -hmm. let's fight corruption it's easier Mm -hmm. to fight corruption in county governments right. than, you know, reducing the money and then making us poor mm -hmm. in the villages. All right. Yeah. Uh, be because of time, I want us now to talk about Kitui politics. So much has been happening. Number one, looking at the, there have been several months that county staff have not been paid precisely to be precise, actually two months. Mm -hmm. There's still another issue of the 1.9 billion unaccounted for. It's still the same issue that we're talking about. Let's really have the, the, the res uh, resignation of Mary, the treasurer for the, the CEC treasury. There's so much that has been happening in Kitui. And do you think that there has been a standoff, like the activities are not working as per they should have been because of all these issues that have been happening? Yes. Um, <coughs> it's true. We, Kitui county workers and staff have not been paid for two months now. We even struggled to pay our June salary. We can as much talk of um, the national stalemate, which I know everybody will run to, even those incompetent. Because salary, <coughs> salary is actually the number one item in an organization. So therefore, if a month goes and you don't have uh, a formula or payment, whether an overdraft, many companies do that, whether an overdraft or uh, your trust, maybe you to get money from elsewhere, uh, Alex becomes a problem. Mm -hmm. I have seen governors talk about August salary, but I'm worried about Kitui County. Uh, apparently, I do not know whether it pinches the Kitui people about them going for two months unpaid. I have no problem. Probably I can be having a multiple streams of getting income. But Alex, do you consider that person who has just recently been employed, and that person is depending entirely 100% on this to meet all the obligations. Obligations, I mean, bills. Mm -hmm. Now it's, it is back to school. Today is back to school. Mm -hmm you got to pay fees. It was very ridiculous when I had the deputy governor say she is going to write letters to landlords <laughs> so that they, they wait. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they, they don't have money. Uh, issues of the finance minister mm -hmm. and many more. There are many more, I can tell you. Even we have a CSU is in office in, uh, and procedurally. Right. So uh the counter assembly of Kitui is doing as much we can do want to do our opposite role there is that i am just tipped of a, of a draft report mm -hmm. done by ford foundation yes. with the law society of kenya mm -hmm. and uh, though we might be ranking very differently in terms of development our oversight role has been taken by my assembly and I want to tell them congratulations. So you're working because on it. being ranked number five mm -hmm. in terms of oversight mm -hmm. <laughs> is not a simple job. 1.9 billion, mm -hmm. yes. The year 20, uh, 18, 18, 2019, mm -hmm. that development, that amount of cash of development went, um, got lost. I would want to say that. We, I, I think how we cannot tell mm -hmm. because even we don't have a revolt right we don't have a revolt mm -hmm. we understand that the ceo of the county says that the assembly has uh, really pinned her down that she can't perform but if you are if madam governor you are pinned down by the assembly that means in the account you have 1.9 b right. and therefore if you don't have 1.9 b in the account then probably we are pinning you down. We are running after you when you are running away with the money. 
uh, <laughs> with that kind of a mention, you know, I, I'm, I want to come to you, you know, uh, uh, Mr. Kizango, and ask who is sleeping on his, on his or her job in terms of these 1.9 billion shillings? Because we have seen Mary, the treasurer of CEC, resigning. <laughs> Let me say this, Alex. First of all, uh, the issue of um, 1.9 billion. It's not new. It's not, we, we, we did not talk about it last week. Mm -hmm. It came up as early as May, mm -hmm. if I remember. And we were, the assembly was questioning how development budget has been utilized. Because you know they report to us quarterly. Mm -hmm. And we, start, we, we never got the implementation reports until sometime in April. Mm -hmm. And then uh, after going through them, we realized uh, there is money meant for development, which we are not sure where it's been spent. And we raised the question. I, I was then the minority leader. Right. And um, together with my colleague, mm -hmm. the majority leader, mm -hmm. we compelled the executive to give us a report on how this money has been spent, the 1.9 billion. Mm -hmm. And uh, as also the leader of government business in the assembly, I personally went to the governor, gave her a list mm -hmm. of uh, concerns from the, the, the assembly that, mm -hmm. you know, needed clarification from, from our office. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, she never gave out anything. She never responded. So then we thought as an assembly, we should write to the Senate mm -hmm. devolution committee uh, to the control of budget and also to the accountant general at the treasury. Mm -hmm and to tell them, uh, to compel the executive to go public on the whereabouts of the 1.9 billion. And that is how I, ex I exited as the leader of government business because <laughs> a leader of government business should not ask questions like those ones. Right. So, should you, protect should you, you know, I was supposed to protect, mm -hmm. but instead I had to ask questions because you remember, I'm also elected to represent my people. Yes. Yeah? Uh -huh. So this money, after we asked, up to date, mm -hmm. there has never been a response from the executive. And then the person in charge of these funds mm -hmm. resigned. Right. What does that tell you? Uh -huh. We need uh, DPP to come to Kitui. Do you think DPP there should is some come? work for him to do. <laughs> All right. Do you think DPP should come to Kitui and ask questions about the 1.9 as we wind up because of time? Yeah. Um, the straight answer, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, he, yes. He has to. He has to. He has, right. to he has to. There is a big duty. <laughs> there's, there's, there's a lot for him to do in right. Kitui. And the reason why he's not coming, mm -hmm. we do not know. We don't know why he's not coming. All right. In fact, you should tell us why he's not coming. Yes. All right. Th many thanks, gentlemen, for keeping it. And, of course, may joining me here on set and, of course, discussing all this about devolution, county and all that, and, of course, Kitui politics. We're looking forward to have you some <laughs> other time. Because of time, I may not be able to give you some parting shot. Many thanks for keeping it. Y2 for it has been an engaging conversation with these gentlemen. Join me once again next week for Youth and Politics. But before then, Val is coming up next with Man Talk. See you in just a few.